Hey everybody, this is Total Gamer Junkie, I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So yesterday I got a message from a, from a commenter called KingCat99 that told me if I look around in David's place in that in that trailer of his, you can find a letter from Victoria Chase that confirms that she survived the storm. Now when I was playing it, I was like, oh, okay, well I because I was an idiot, I was like I was like looking for a letter in my second playthrough, the one you know that one where you can see the snapshot of Nathan Prescott or the mugshot, whatever it's called. But no, actually she is one of the survivors that survived Arcadia Bay when the storm happened. Now I wanna read the letter to you, what it says, and then I wanna go over my thoughts and what I think about it. So the letter says, Dear Mr. Madsen, Sorry this is so late, but I put the wrong P.O. box address on the envelope on the envelopes and the letter was returned. Hope this one finds you. I'm glad you left Arcadia Bay or what's left of it. I'm now going to therapy, which helps, but I still get nightmares. I hope that Max and Chloe are keeping you company. They are a good team. I'm still in Seattle looking over my parents' gallery. Their partner Jessica is great. She's taking care of everything. The will is a mess, but I will be okay. It's hard to get over the fact that, in a way, I owe my life to Mark Jefferson throwing me in his fucking bunker. I get flashes of his creep face all the time, but then I see yours coming to rescue me. I'll probably be thanking you for the rest of my life for that. Please keep in touch at this address for a while, and it's just the two uh, brackets. Uh, and let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Thanks again for your services. Best wishes. The chase. So after reading that letter, I couldn't help but feel confused. How did Victoria end up in the dark room? Now, if you remember, like all you Life is Strange fans, like, because whenever you mention Life is Strange, everyone's like, oh yeah, Chloe and Max. Like mo most people, like I'd say at least eight out of ten when you say Life is Strange, they'll think of Max and Chloe. So, as you all know, um, when you're in the dark room, you find out there's a bunch of binders and they all have photographs in them but one of them is empty and that one is Victoria and then after you discover Rachel's body you head off back to Blackwell and you're trying to track down Nathan and when you're there you end up running into Victoria and like in, in my walkthrough when I first played the game I, I verbally destroyed the bitch because because that's what she is that's what Victoria is a, a total bitch like she purposely, because like, that's one of the things I hated about her, and I also love how they made her, made me hate her, because she's a, one of the well-written characters in the game, in, in my opinion. So, like, after um, I verbally abuse her, I get the option to warn her about the dark room or not, and I chose not to. So, it's because if you don't warn her about the dark room, then she doesn't get captured. But if you do warn her, and she believes you, then you, uh, then she will end up going to Jefferson, and he'll drug her, and end up capturing her, and then later he ends up killing her. So how is she still alive? Now, one of the problems with this is the the options. Uh, when you start up Life is Strange 2, it asks, "Did you sacrifice Arcadia Bay or sacrifice Chloe?" So since we don't get to import our choices, it's not really like doesn't really feel impactful, you know what I mean? But anyways, um, I, I do think I have a valid reason for how, for how Victoria ended up in the dark room and how she, and how she survived. Now, after you use the photograph, you get off Warren in episode 5 to travel back to episode 4. You have to warn Chloe that Jefferson is, was behind everything and Nathan was merely a patsy. Now, once you persuade her not to go to school because, you you know, if she does, then she's going to end up dying. Uh, you go back and you tell David about the dark room because it fl the pictures begin flashing and they're showing what's changed. So what happens is Max and Chloe they go over to David and they give him all the evidence. Once that happens, David takes two police soldiers, police officers, not soldiers, sorry two police officers and they raid the dark room and there we see Jefferson now he has if you take a look at him he has a glove on his hand and we can see that there are um, 
binders out. Uh, but we don't get a clear look at the room. Like, if you look at the picture, you can see the couch, but we can't see what's past that. So, so we can assume, like, this is how she survived. So, since Jefferson couldn't get his hands on Max and Chloe at the time, and they, and he believed that they believed it was Nathan. So, so Jefferson was like, okay, I'm in the clear. So, he continued to do his thing like for whatever reason I have no idea now I assume that this photograph when this is happening this is during episode 4 so my guess is what happens is he goads Max and Chloe with the text from Nathan's phone which he sent but they don't do anything and when nothing happens like for some stupid reason Jefferson's like I'll continue with my plan so he, dr he drugs Victoria and he starts taking pictures of her and that's when David and the two police officers burst in. So we can assume that in the photograph Victoria is has her hands bound and she's lying behind the couch um, where we can't see her. It, which is, it is a plausible explanation but it's kind of stupid because Jefferson is, he really is um, pretty smart, calculating was able to make everyone think he was able to pin everything on Nathan while keeping himself in the clear so like he even if you go back and play Life is Strange 1 and you're listening to Jefferson he even says now yeah, he's like I could t I could t take a picture of any one of you in a dark room and capture you in a moment of despair and that's what he does with girls or women teenagers you know what I mean so yeah so I don't see him just Ignoring Max and Chloe and continuing with the darkroom, continuing his experiments, you know what I mean? Like he's sick, depraved, whatever you want to call it. So that's one of the issues I have, but at least we, it, at least we kind of get a theory, like a speculation on how Victoria survived the storm. So anyways, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Tall Gamer Junkie, signing off.